My name is Richard. Today I'm going to be talking about entering your data into the people file. We're going to add a contact and uh, give you the basic understanding of just the simplest data entry here in Song Tracker. So we're over here in the uh, we're in the home base file. I'm going to click on people, and then I'll click the data entry layout, which takes me right to this screen. Now you'll notice. This left side of the screen will always stay the same. The right side of this of screen will change as necessary uh, according to the type of data you enter here in this field, author, lead, customer type thing in this field. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by adding a new person. You can see how the data enters here and I'll go over it with you. All right, we're gonna to go to the very top of the button palette and click the plus button, which will give you a blank record. All right, I'm gonna type um, a, an author in. Let's give it a name of Jack Melody. Press my tab key. It goes right to the company name right here. Now, if you need to, you can add a title, but you don't need to. That's just up to you. Uh, but if you want to keep track of a title, that's where you would do it in the title field, of course. I'm going to put a company name in. Let's call it New Melody Music. And now I'm going to go up and click on this field. Notice first before I do that, that the one was auto entered. This is your company number. So if you have two publishing companies, they mo may look like this. So we have ABC uh, Publishing Company and XYZ Music Group. Your company names would show up there. And that's from the setup file tutorial if you need information on that. All right, so let's click on this field. Uh, just ignore the retail, let that auto enter each time. Uh, you, can also, you can add wholesale in, in cases where you sell CDs or videos and you have retail and wholesale sales to customers. You could track it that way, but most people won't. They just leave it retail and enter that way. Um, that way you have that information if it's ever needed. But I click here, and if it's a customer, cust, we're going to call this person an author. So let's go down here and choose author. Now, I click the new button right here to add a new address. And as soon as I do, you'll notice this drops down and we'll get a continue button up here. So I'm going to click this. And there's your continue button up here. First thing I'm going to do, it puts in automatically a billing address. It gives a billing and a shipping address for everybody. Uh, I'm going to press my tab key. goes into the first field. Let's enter one, two, three, music row, for example. Press tab, sweet. One, two, five, press my tab. It goes to the zip code instead of the city. This is because we have a neat file in there called ship zips that handles your auto entry of your city and state. Um, this is just to make your data entry quicker and more, um, just, just an easier way to do it. So there's, there's uh, 54,000 zip codes in there. So what we're gonna do is type uh, this three, seven, 201 and press the tab key and it looks up automatically it looks up nashville and tennessee now in case something's wrong you're in the field you can always retype it or tab and go to the state and otherwise just move on now in here then if you have a department or county that you want to to include or province county or province say if it's canadian just click this checkbox Whoops, click it again. Oh, it's not bringing it up because I have not clicked the continue button yet. So this button needs to be clicked or better yet, just hit your enter key and it will click this. So you don't really have to go up and just hit your enter key or your re, uh, return key and it automatically entered the second address. If you scroll down, you'll see you can have unlimited addresses per contact. So it puts a billing and a shipping in there. If you need to sh change the names of what where it's from, if you have a home address or something, you can change it. But uh, 
if uh, now going back if you needed to add a county or province then afterwards click this oh okay what happened was i'm going to click cancel because once i clicked into this it thought i was trying to add a new address so click cancel so that we're out of the script and then i click this it allows me to type a county click ok when you're done if you wanted to add a department go to the department music department for example click ok and it will put it on the address label if necessary if i click label notice it put music department in there that's just optional if you don't need that this is a label that if you hit print you could use that for example i use them in uh, packing slip and clothes pouches for shipping packages that's a real nice way to go when you want to get back to the screen click your data entry button and it'll take you right back so now we've entered an address want to click in here and add a phone so let's do 800 five, one, two three four five for example press your tab key to get out it'll go right to the next field which is the type of phone or uh, email address for example fax number you always want to use main for the main number whatever the one is you're going to automatically dial or dial each time use that make that your main in case you have multiples if you have a cell phone you can put a cell number in there whichever one you're going to call is the main number now we're going to enter an email address let's do jack at new melody music.com press your tab key and now choose main email whatever their main email is you want to make sure you specify main email because the system's going to look for the word main email when you're trying to send an email automatically through the system and send it into your email system it will track it that way and this way you can keep multiple email addresses in here but the only one that will be it will be sent to is Jack at New Melody Music because it's the, it's specified as the main email. So be sure you pick that correctly if you're adding multiple email addresses. All right, I'm going to click in here. We'll click New Melody Music dot com. Now, if this was a legitimate address, I'd be able to click this word. Uh, website and it would take me to a, a a screen that would show show me the website anytime but it's not gonna work I, I didn't I picked a website that I didn't want to infringe on anybody's website so we chose not to now going on to category check this and choose a, a, a person a type of person for example we'll just choose musician you choose anything you want and it automatically enters initial contact so he's a new lead or a new author so he says our initial contact or maybe you want it to be high priority because it's your main writer referred by a website for example how did you run into him we'll skip key code for now it's not that important for you a citizen of the usa over here and domiciled in usa these are the two fields they're going to go on uh, jack melody's copyright form so it will automatically look up from here now terms for any contracts we do with jack will be quarterly payments uh studio sessions hourly rate let's say it's two hundred dollars whoops two hundred dollars and we'll leave union affiliation eh, for the fun afm union number He's an ASCAP writer, so we'll put in the affiliation. I'm pressing my tab to go field to field. So use your tab key on your keyboard and press that to go in the tab order that we've specified. Choosing ASCAP. Uh, let's see. No statements would be clicked if if this is, say, a collaborator that you're not responsible to send state, uh, royalty statements to. If that be the case and you're never going to send them money or a statement, you can click no statements and then when we go to we make different songs that jack's part of as a collaborator the system will know not to send him a statement so 
this would be only for authors and publishers that you put into the system. Just click that and check it if you do not want him to get a statement. In other words, if you're not in charge of sending statements, maybe he's a collaborator of one of your writers and he has his own publishing and they take care of that. So it's up to you. You can put his birth date in. Uh, you can just click on this calendar icon and choose a date. It knows that it's his birthday. It's right around his birthday. It's within a week each direction. Kind of keeps track of that in case you want to click that and look up people that are having a birthday. Notice I clicked on birthday and it did a find here for two people that happened to have their birthday this week. And there's Jack. So it did find it. So that's a good way to be able to send out cards or you can mention them on Facebook or send them an email if you like. It, you can go in there once a week and click the birthday calc and it will keep track of it for you and show you, oh, so-and-so's got a birthday. It's a good reminder. Always, when you enter the birthday, always put a year in. If you don't know how old they are, just put the current year, like 2016 or whatever, 17. Whatever the current year is, put that in because when it calculates this field here, it works on the month, the day, and the year. Uh, so be sure to enter that correct. Don't just put, in this instance, 11 slash 8. It would not calculate correctly. Okay, now this, we give you a field just in case uh, you want to track somebody's manager or secretary or a spouse, etc. It just gives you another contact it's not phone information stuff, but at least you'll know the name of George Barney. That is his manager, so you'll remember that. Now, an IPI code, uh, that's like a nine-digit code just to identify songwriters and publishers. So we'll put that in like this. If you use that, it's, uh, it's helpful to have that information. Now, these are different functions you can use. You, these, these from the bottom down are for another system, so that do not include those. But all these up at the top, you can choose that. And after you choose it, new record, you would click do it, and it would create a new record. So those are things you can do. Do my work. And here's for activities. Now, activities are like letters and emails, phone calls, uh, messages, anything you might do, you can choose a new to-do list for your to-do list, a new to-do, and click do it. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll explain that when we get to a tutorial on the activities or activity log. I'll explain that. And speaking of activity log, that is right here. Whenever you create a letter or something, you can always click right in here and type um, trade show or whatever it is. Don't forget to go, and it automatically will date it. It puts it in as a to-do, but you can change this as just a memo or whatever you want to hold it as. It'll allow you to keep different activity types. And based on the activity type is uh, how it will be displayed. So like a letter and a memo will be different looking than a to-do item. So, for example, let's do a memo and click on the Go button over here on the right. And it just shows it looks like a piece of paper, a notebook paper. And when you're done, click Done. Now, go into this more when we get to the activities. But what's cool is you can make quick notes here. You can make a subject. You can put, you can go and you can do thousands and thousands of characters. You can type forever in here and uh, put all the information or copy paste all the information you want into the body of the message. These can also be used for emails. If you want to compose an email right here, see you at the concert and, you know, type your email as long as you want. Okay. And then just what you do is you click here. Let's see. Outgoing call. Where do we want? We want just a letter, a email. Is there an email here? Yeah, there it is. Just do it as an email. And then 
you can actually send it. Now, I'm not going to do that here, but you can also hit the S button if you want it to speak. See you at the concert. The body of your message reads LSD, LKSD, JF, LK, JF, LK, LT, SLK, DSLK, JF. Command period to stop on Mac. Control period. You can check that's for uh, speech. You can check that in your file. Or for Windows users, you might want to check that um, in your FileMaker manual. It'll tell you how to stop it. But that's a nice feature. You can have it read your letters. You can proofread that way. Okay, now one, one thing we didn't was a Profile 11 field, which stands for music types. Uh, this, you can check as many pop-up, uh, pop I'm sorry, uh, check boxes as you wish that apply to this person. So Jack is a singer-songwriter. He does pop music, uh, say gospel. He does live music, country, vocal. Okay. And he's an orchestra arranger, so we'll put orchestral. So that you can come back later and do a fine for any kind of music in the fine mode, and Jack would be included in your find. If you're looking for all ballad writers, you'd be able to find that, or all orchestral writers. So there's your data entry um, on your main de detail screen for an author. Now, if you're, if you're entering customers, vendors, leads, other types, uh, employee, you're going to have a different looking screen on the right. The left side will stay the same. All the rules apply that we just went through, but the right side of the screen will change. So what I'm going to do is show all records so that you can look at what's in the database. There's 31 here. I'm going to click through these and on some of them will change and some of them will stay the same. Click. So there's another percentage point or writer, author, or publisher. These three will always show the music industry details. Percentage points represents a contact like a producer who gets paid in percentage points. Managers get paid in percentage points. So versus authors and publishers get paid on splits. Now, as we click through these buttons at the top, Notice it changes there, because that's a, he's a vendor, okay? There's another writer, or percentage points. Producer, publisher. Okay, here's a customer, Steven Spielberg. So for someone like this, a customer, you've got credit card numbers, expiration dates, the name on the credit card, resale number, if you have assigned salespersons, you can assign your employees as that. Uh, credit limit, credit hold, just basic fields that you'd use in sales. Date of last transaction, that's just stuff that you can keep track of if you wish. Price check, I don't believe that's hooked up, but you can track price levels. You can put all this data in term days. Any discounts they might get, for example, if you have terms, regular discount, 30 days terms. You can just keep track of that in case. Uh, it, not, it doesn't really do much with that, except we're using our Biz Basic system, which is a different FileMaker system we've developed. Uh, and both those systems use the same type people file. All right. So let me keep going through here. I want to go backwards because I want to show you an employee. There's a fan, fan, customer, percentage points, fan. I believe there's a couple in here. There we go. Here's an EMP, Stuart 5.0, Bisworth Expeditions. Okay, notice there's employee information here that you can add for this contact. You can keep track of a photo if you want. You can click on that and attach a photo. You can put general profile information. Dr. 5.0 is a wonderful builder of relationships. He has been with us for a long time, blah, blah. What are his benefits? Full dental and metal benefits, you meant medical, wage info, salary to be paid twice each month. You can keep track of that information in there 
his hourly rate, gender, termination date, department, employee type, position, marital status, date of birth, social security number. So some of this is private information. So we've got some preferences in our preferences file that uh, look under administration files, a tutorial that explains that. But there's a preference where you can keep your, if you have multiple users on our system, you can keep certain people out of this screen because you don't want people seeing this sensitive data like social security number. So it will prevent that. But uh, if, if that is the case, then you want to check that other tutorial out under admin. All right. That should give us the basic information on entering, entering data. I hope this was helpful.